Welcome back, my friends. I'm so glad you're joining me for the Morning Mindset this morning. You are also joining thousands and thousands of people across the globe. I have just recently looked into the statistics for this podcast to see where in the world people are listening to the Morning Mindset. And my friends, it is literally in hundreds of countries, thousands of people across the globe are joining you listening to this audio. And I don't tell you that to boast. I tell you that to encourage you that God is doing something here that he's included you in to be a part of. And he wants you to share it. He wants you to pass out the goods to the people around you. So let people know about the morning mindset. I would love to see what we together can do to spread God's word and to equip believers in Jesus Christ to live their days in step with the Spirit of God because they've set their minds in the right place as they begin their day. We've been talking these last few episodes about Christmas gifts, and here as we move toward the holiday of Christmas, I really think it's important for us to consider that Christmas, though we often think of it in terms of giving gifts and receiving gifts, really is about God, the ultimate giver, giving us a gift. He gave us his son, but through his son, we receive all kinds of other gifts, all kinds of mind-blowing, eternity-shaping gifts. And today, I want us to look in the book of Galatians, chapter number five, and we're going to look at another one of those gifts. Now, these passages I've been reading these last few days are not your typical Christmas passages. They're not about the baby in the manger and about the wise men coming and those sorts of things. These are about what happens to us and for us because of what Jesus did at that manger and because of what he provided at the cross, which we celebrate at Easter. So we're going to be looking at Galatians chapter 5, beginning in verse 16. Here's what Paul writes. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, And the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now let's pause there. And you don't see anything in here referring to the coming of Jesus like the previous verses we've looked at. You don't see anything here that talks about God in a certain time sending his Son But we do see here a result of what comes from the gift of his son. And that is that we now have the spirit of God. And naturally, I don't know what your concept of the spirit of God is. It's important, I think, though, that we get this one right. Because this shapes so much of not just our theology, which is our belief about God, but our practice in how we live out our faith in Jesus Christ. The spirit of God in the scriptures is not just a power. It's not just this nebulous, mystical kind of a a source of, of energy and strength that comes from God. The Spirit of God is God himself. The Spirit of God is, we often say, the third person of the Trinity. You see in the scriptures time and time again, the Spirit spoken about as a person, and that is exactly what he is. He is God himself manifesting through the Spirit. And Paul is telling us here, we have an opportunity now, because of our faith in Jesus Christ, because of the coming of Jesus, to have the Spirit of God dwelling within us. He lives in us and he guides us. And that's what Paul is meaning when he says, we are to walk by the Spirit. The word walk is referring to the way that we live. And he's saying, I say walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. My friends, think about that promise. You will not gratify the desires of the flesh if you walk by the Spirit. That is a way out of sin. That is a freedom from daily practice of sin by walking in the Spirit. And what does that mean? Well, it means we now, like we might previously have looked at a checklist and said, oh, am I doing this behavior or this behavior? Oh, I need to quit that. Now we have the Spirit of God, a person living within us to guide us. And I encourage you, my friends, get in touch with the Spirit. Learn to listen to the Spirit. And maybe we'll talk about that more in future episodes of The Morning Mindset. 